Interrupting this broadcast to give a special thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. World of Warships is a naval warfare themed free to play multiplayer online game developed and published by a company known as War Gaming. Available on multiple platforms including Android, Mac OS, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, PC of course, and more. New content is released every month and on screen you're going to be seeing a showcase of the big whiskey that made itself into the game, also known as the USS Wisconsin. You'll be able to command the power of the USS Wisconsin and enjoy fresh gameplay experiences in World of Warships stunning 12v12 arenas. You'll experience top-notch graphics across more than 40 unique maps with dynamic weather that have been updated with stunning new water effects and textures. You'll have multiple ships to choose from and be able to conquer the ocean aboard history's most iconic battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers, or cruisers and submarines. So far, there appear to be five different types of ships you can have. The heavily armored battleships with the most powerful guns, the swift and stealthy destroyers, the cruisers which are universal fighters, the aircraft carriers with aircraft as the main fighting force, and the stealthy submarines. The gameplay difference between these ship classes is very impactful, so you'll never experience the same thing twice. Make sure to use my link in the description to download World of Warships, and during the registration, enter the promo code WISCONSIN to receive a huge starter pack including 500 doubloons, 2 million credits, 10 days of premium account time, a token USA 4 which gives you the ability to unlock the Clemson, the Phoenix, the Wyoming, and the Langley after 15 battles, alongside some American cruiser containers. Special thanks again for World of Warships for sponsoring this video, and now back to it. What's going on folks? Hope you're having a wonderful night or day. Welcome to some Manor Lords. I'm sure you've seen tons of footage about how awesome this game has been. I'm actually getting ready to take on my first big battle. Uh, I've got myself about 16 hours, maybe actually a little bit less, about 10 hours under my belt with this game so far, but I've been absolutely loving it. I would say that it's one of the best, if not the best RTS game that I've played in the past year. Uh, it's so fleshed out, even in its early access state, there's so much to it. And even when you like zoom in down on the characters, I remember one thing that I loved from the last demo was how uh, intricate it was watching the NPCs at work. And what was really nice about it as well is right now the battles are kind of um, kind of basic. I think you, you might you might hear some feedback about that. And at the moment, yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do with the battles. There's different uh, kind of like formations and stuff like that that you can use. But uh, there's it's not nothing like Total War, for example, at the moment. But as far as like everything else, um, I would say that you could probably complete this game in the span of about 20 hours or so. Like do everything that you need to do in terms of building progress. I haven't seen everything thing yet but i have unlocked the ability to craft my manor and i actually have that made i just haven't put walls around it or anything yet but i am actually working on just to kind of take a zoom out here i am kind of working on getting ready to take over a region which i actually did not know that this actually belonged to an enemy uh well he was neutral at first but when you start when you start the game at least in dominion mode in this mode specifically um you have npc kingdoms or npc settlements that you can kind of either be friendly with or you know go ahead and claim their stuff and be enemies with i wasn't aware uh that it kind of makes sense because whenever whenever a bandit camp pops up this guy's army will pop up from this section so i should have known but I thought I thought he was actually coming from like the outer regions of the map. I didn't know he was actually coming from this territory per se because he would always spawn right here whenever a bandit camp would spawn like right there. So I'm at war with him now. Uh, he's got a fairly sizable army. Um, he's got five units, 36 people in each one except for the brigands. I, on the other hand, I have mercenaries on top of my actual regular army. So I got 31 archers, 14 militia footmen, 33 spear militia, and 5 retinue, which his retinue versus my retinue is kind of worrisome because he does have more than me. I think I'll have to utilize flanking if I want to make sure that I can actually win this fight. So I'm kind of concerned about that. But as far as mercenaries go, I've got myself... Uh, a unit of merc light mercenaries right here, infantry, got two archers, one heavy as well, and light mercenary archers right there, light spearmen, so, and another unit of light archers. So I'm thinking if I can kind of maneuver my way around this man, uh, first thing I probably want to do is get my infantry locked in on him and then let my archers get on his flank and then just start laying into him. What can kind of pose a problem though is if I let him get into this forest area, I think the battle itself is kind of um 
supposed to take place in this specific area right here. Let me see. Yeah, right there. So I probably need to get like right here with this army, come to think of it, and then go ahead and march from there. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. I'll get these guys lined up here. So let's get these guys in front, actually. Get these guys right behind, and then I got my infantry guys right here. So I'll go ahead and put them right there. Once I get in place, I can go ahead and make sure that these infantry can neck and neck lock on and I'll have my archers come in on the sides. But just to get a bird's eye view of the settlement, um, I've got a decent chunk of progress made so far in this one. Uh, I did actually, like I said, I got my manor crafted. I just haven't really done a whole lot with it yet in terms of making walls and stuff. Oh. Okay. Okay, the battle begins. So I think they might come for me. I have to be careful. I have to make sure that I can get in place before before this starts. Okay. All right. So I do actually have a second region as well. Uh, it is possible to cra you know, claim a second and third and so on region with influence that you get from winning battles and stuff like that. Uh, this is kind of like my uh, farming... Well, sorry, wild animal hunting and berry deposit settlement. Uh, you can see like these ha these resources have crowns, which basically means that they have more available than normal. Also, when it comes to more finite resources like iron, for example, for example, this one, I have a big iron deposit right here and you can actually craft a deep mine on it, which I will be doing once I unlock the research and it allows you to extract resources indefinitely, which is something you really want because, for example, I did have a clay mine somewhere in this area, but it only had like 80 units of resource and it ran out. The stone deposit, I do have a, a mine for it but i just haven't had people on it because you kind of have to float people around depending on what you need and if i were to put them back on it and they did go through that 105 stone resource it would just run out and i would not be able to claim any you know get any more of it until i went to a new region and farm there or i found one with a rich deposit and that's kind of why i plan to attack this one well take it over rather because it does have a stone deposit rich one and a clay deposit rich one right now there's only those like five resources the wild animals berries the iron and the stone and clay so that's the last thing i really need and it's actually it's kind of funny that he is in that region he's very smart i could have gone for this one and i wouldn't have had to attack this guy but i mean this one seemed closer, and again, I did not know that it was uh, actually claimed by him. So we're going to have to see how this battle goes. But now you know the story, so I'm going to have to try to figure this out here. Okay, he's stopping, I think. Now, if I can get him right there, I might go ahead. Oh, okay, I might actually go ahead and attack. You see this? This, this looks like a downhill part right here, so I would have the height advantage. Now, what's good about this is the effectiveness of the troops. Uh, it can actually, so we're in the home region right now, right? We're moving downhill. We got cohesion, which is like negative 21%. The fatigue is very bad as well. But if I can make it to that hillside right here, I might actually have an advantage here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start charging my guys at him. Now, I want to make sure I'm very careful about who I put where. Now, the archers, I think, can take out their archers easily enough. I think I'll probably want to put the light infantry up against his retinue. So I'll see if I can move these guys into place here. Um, thinking, thinking, thinking. So I'm going to have to put all the archers together if I can't or not. Not all of them together, but I think I do want to have. So this is a light mercenaries. and Okay, so I'll probably want these guys to be, I don't know number let's say number eight okay these two that's light and that's heavy you guys can be number nine and then so i have four units of archers total okay good Which one's two? Oh, this one's two. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a lot of infantry to utilize, which does concern me. Um, it's two. 
I think I'll go ahead and put these two together. So that's one, two, three, and seven. Okay. Seven is coming, right? Eight on the side. Nine on the left. Okay. So I could get him to charge at me. I think I do want them in my home region, though. Oh, I'm messing up already. Look at that. Okay, so that's one. Well, I want to make sure they're not running. Shiz. Already, like I think I routed most of his army already. He's like, I can make this worth your while if you drop all your claims. My claims are non-negotiable, bro. That's right. You drop him a letter and everything. It's pretty cool, actually. Where those archers go? Set these guys on shoot at will. Because I don't know where their archers went. Oh, also, we're running out of fuel. Hold on, let me, let me set that real quick before I forget. Woodcutter's Lodge. I need, uh, need an extra person there. Thank you. Cut. Now, the food's good. Uh, I just need to get myself some more firewood. Which I can definitely utilize this settlement more for that on um, this forager woodcutters. Okay, yeah, they're holding pretty well there. Nice. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. That's it. Peace declared. That's what I'm talking about, yo. All right. Okay, now we can go ahead and disband these mercenaries. Let's disband these bastards, these beautiful bastards. Thank you very much for your service. Appreciate you. What's that? Oh, okay. Very nice. All right, so we disband all those units so we don't have to worry about paying them. Now I'm actually, I've actually got this claim so I can now put a settlement down. I'm gonna go ahead and look to my own stuff first before I worry about that because I would say handling 
two villages alone is is more than enough on my plate and handling three is going to be kind of insane so i got to figure out what is going on with this uh firewood situation we're getting close to the autumn and we need to make sure that we got at least a decent chunk of firewood before the winter pops so i got three of these guys on what are we doing here felling a tree okay good Three, three families on this right now, which is perfect. Uh, season will last for a month before we run out of fuel. Seven months on the food. We're doing really good on that. I'll keep... Uh, I, I, right now, I have my berry guys, or my, my, my other settlement, transporting a ton of berries over. I'll, I'll just keep doing that because, uh, yeah, we're, we're stockpiling a crap ton of berries right now. As a matter of fact, excuse me, I need to... Um, I need to upgrade this granary. I meant to do that, actually. I forgot. So I will go ahead and I just need five units of stone and then I can do that. I'll go ahead and get that going here. I just want to make sure I don't. Um, oh, I got to take these guys off at the hunting camp. OK, so that can repopulate. I also um, th there's a cool system where you can actually enact development points um, when your when your settlement gets to a certain threshold. Like when you're starting off, you just have to get the regular housing plots and then you have to get them to level two as you go further and further and. When you, sorry, anyway, I'm not explaining it fully, but when you get these different settlement levels, you're going to get points that you can use. And then what I've done with the second one, since it has rich deposits for hunting and berry, I've enabled trapping, which enables hunters to lay skill, skillfully lay traps in the forest. It gives a passive income of meat and then forest management, which increases, which doubles the berry deposit, which is very good for this one. You can also double the amount of meat harvested from hunters and butchers from the goat pen, which I haven't really worried about too much yet. So that means that I'm going to be getting a ton of meat from this. And as far as the berry deposit, I'm going to be getting a very, very crap ton of that, which is fantastic. So right now, my only struggles, I would say, is that on my other settlement um it's kind of tricky to keep ale production going i know it's a weird thing to say but like the fields for example um we're, we're getting there right now we're, we're getting close to autumn uh harvesting but this see this field's not even fully grown yet um i actually did for this settlement uh kind of make a mistake i would say i did increase the berry deposits on this one it doesn't have a rich one but i mean it does have a big enough berry deposit to where it's like whatever you know 80 is still pretty decent although this is this is my main settlement this is more of like the farming one because it's actually got very good fertility and military based one so i've got the iron deposit here uh, you know i'm going i'm going through this tree i got the charcoal kiln so that i can get more firewood or more fuel going and then what i can do here is i can go down to the deep mining one to be able to upgrade to the deep mine as soon as i'm able to get seven more of these level three plots which is the highest level of housing you can get right now and right now there's a lot of things that are locked in early access as far as these different perks it's still in progress but even with and that's kind of why i say like within 20 hours you can probably accomplish most stuff mo most of the pro progression stuff there's also once you build a manor there's policies you can sign at the moment though these two that you have available i, I chose the one that was locked in early access because these two right here aren't really useful to me at the moment at least in this one because it's like you can get wild animals on rich deposits to breed twice as fast at the cost of 50 percent reduced yield from crops but it's like that would completely screw me in this region because it has got really good fertility for farming this one on the other hand uh maybe reduces food consumption but but, but decreases approval i don't really need that though because i'm already importing berry food from um oh firewood stall nice from uh, this settlement so it's not really like a big concern for me so that part's good at least um I'm trying to think as well i wouldn't say i completely forgot what i was thinking about here um it was something good oh actually i should probably make sure that i can upgrade that so the herb garden what i'm probably gonna do in this settlement because we have so many berries is i'm gonna put somebody to work on the dying station and then i have the trading post right here i'm gonna go ahead and start selling a lot of the um the dyes that we're gonna be able to make from crafting them for using the berries and then i'm gonna make a ton of money off of that i think i have to oh no i don't i don't have to buy the trading route thank goodness 
Which is really good because, um, yeah, that's really good. So, I choose the desired surplus that I want, and then I'll basically sell anything over that, which is pretty nice. Establish a trade route. Oh, I do have to do that, I guess, then. Okay. Huh. Fancy that. Didn't know that. Because uh, I've, I've already done that on my other region over here. Which, I should probably check that again. I don't know if... Uh, hold on. Okay, yeah, I got that going right now. Follow merchant. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I've already unlocked this on, on these ones. So that's good. That's good. Okay. That's for the firewood, firewood one. I could probably import some of this, to be honest, right now. Like, I, I should probably... I should probably get that up a, up a bit. So I'll get that to at least 75, you know, just to be safe. And then uh, hopefully we'll have enough gold left over. So that should work out. Dyer's going to be going. Should knock out some of the berries as well. Although I want to make sure we don't get too low. I just want to get, I just want to get uh, enough to make a decent chunk of money, regional money here, because that's something that we're kind of lacking on in this region and we need to upgrade stuff so we'll definitely need that bodies need burial oh okay right so i may have to assign somebody to the corpse pit here so they can start burying these guys work area is empty for what foragers hut oh okay yeah yeah good th yeah good call thank you okay looks like we're already getting that done and looks like we're already done there cool all right, so what's the what's this now? This burger's got uh, an issue. Okay, so here's the thing. So when you upgrade these different plots, so, so the way that the housing system works, actually, I actually was going to show the farming off too. So let's show the farming first. So you can see the fertility difference in this region that I use for hunting and berry gathering. It's pretty crap. But in this region, it's got amazing fertility. It's also funny that this one is kind of shite on the fertility as well. The, all Pretty much, oh wow, pretty much all of them around have questionable fertility except mine. So that one up there, I'd have to go to that one up there if I wanted to get a decent farming settlement. That's interesting. Yeah, I think if you're not like starting on a tile, like a territory that has a decent fertility, you're kind of being shot in the foot by the game, or unless you have one that's right next to you, at the very least, because otherwise it's going to be hell, hell and high water getting certain things um, farmed. Like you need, because you need flax to be able to make what is it? The was it's the linen or the um, flax for the linen? Yeah, which is used to make clothes, which then you, then you can use to supply to your villagers. And then yeah, you need yeah you need that good stuff. I'm probably going to have to force an early harvest here. Which is probably what I'll end up doing here. 16% growth. Yeah, I'll probably have to. Looks like this one's already good to go. Awesome. So I won't have to worry too much about the barley as far as this goes, though. Wait, what am I looking at here? What is this? Is this already harvested? Oh, shiz. What happened? Did we get a drought or something? I'm confused. Oh, okay, I guess we harvested it already. Interesting. Alright, so I guess they're going to go ahead and start sowing the fields then. I'll go ahead and pop this one for Enforce and Early Harvest so I can get that flax going. And then uh, I will take a look here. So what we need to do here is when, we need, when you um, build a house, you can choose the size of the house that you want to build. And when you're building it, you can kind of see this zoning uh, the zoning indicators so you can kind of choose how big you want it to be now you very you have to be careful with this because basically depending on the size of the house housing zone that you have you'll either have if you can see these uh, house icons that have the art the, the hammer on them you'll either have one of those or you'll have one of these basically right so if the houses are too short in the zone then you only get the house to increase your population. But if you have these, you can actually build artisan buildings on the backside of the houses, which are very useful and very needed actually. And these would consist of, of uh, artisan buildings like, for example, uh, having a chicken coop so that you can 
uh, harvest eggs and then vegetable garden as well goat goat shed you got an apple orchard after you unlock the technology and the development tree i do have one of these already armor workshop bowyer workshop tailor workshop very important for clothes cloaks and gambesons um because you'll you'll see in a second i'll show you the market because yeah, this is kind of the market is kind of how all that stuff gets distributed to your different villagers you got the cobbler's workshop for shoes the joiner's workshop for shields of all kind and wooden parts which i'm assuming are going to be for siege engines later We're not really useful now uh, you got the brewery extension for ale after i get that uh barley crafted into malt with by down by the farm i got the building for it this brewery extension will start making some of that ale and i got the blacksmith workshop got at least two of those to produce tools spears and sidearms for my different uh, military units and then after before long i can get the bakery so that i can produce bread from flour uh and, the, and so you have to be extremely careful and, and kind of plan out i mean granted i i've just kind of wong, winged it what is it is it wing or wong <laughs> i've been winging it up until this point so there's really no rhyme or reason to what i've got i've just been kind of going at it but uh, i would really really much like to get the bread development unlocked for shadow veil i'd have to um allow to use a fallow field as a pasture which rapidly okay so bakery extension this is what i need right here to be able to produce bread now there's also a way that you can get like this cart before I get ahead of myself, uh, it's a foreign supplier, so you can build this on your um, your markets, and it gives you a passive income of bread as long as the region has enough regional wealth. And then also, uh, you had the firewood cart too. So the market, I'm gonna go ahead and come over to it here. Where are we at here? So this is how all of your stuff gets distributed to the different uh houses so as you can see fuel is good all across the board everybody's got enough fuel for right now food variety is extremely lacking what i could really use is some passive income or just straight up income of bread very much so right now we've got a ton of berries we've got a decent chunk of meat eggs uh, i will probably as a matter of fact go ahead i should have done this earlier i'm gonna go ahead and switch the packing station in my other territory which is basically how i send over resources from berries to meat now this essentially allows me to um, send resources between my two settlements something i wasn't exactly sure on which to be honest I, i'm not fully 100 percent sure on yet is if you need to set the packing station in the sending territory and the receiving territory to the same thing. So far, it seems like you only have to do it in one of the regions. So that's pretty good at least. Um, where's mine at? So I have a second packing station over on my main region, but I don't have anybody on it yet. Also, you do need to hire livestock to, uh, or you know, order livestock or, or even breed your own livestock to be able to help you in these different facilities. There's a whole lot of systems involved in this game. It's a lot of stuff to go over in one go. But uh, I would highly recommend taking at least, you know, like a first run, take it, take it fairly slow. And then what I do, what I, what I do is uh, I, uh, I go about an hour or two just to get a feel for the different systems. And then I start over. That's kind of what I'd recommend doing. I don't know how you, you might already, you know, be very comfortable with the game first, first time you get in there. You may not have to worry about that, but personally, I definitely did. So. I need to focus on not only getting that meat going, so that's gonna be that's gonna be happening. But I need to get some of these other buildings set up on uh, food. So right now, I do have the ability to upgrade some of these to tier three as well, which is fantastic. As a matter of fact, I should definitely be doing that. So I will go ahead and pump that brewery. That requirements not met. Okay, fun. I'll say possibly the tailor shop then. In that case, I suppose. I'll do that one and then uh, here's a second blacksmith I got the Fletcher shop going uh, I guess I could do the Fletcher shop right um, only thing is it takes up a ton of um, a ton of planks to make those bows that's the only part I don't like about that um, so I'll do that and then 
I suppose, how good are we doing on the logging here? It doesn't seem like we're doing that hot, to be honest. I'm going to have to kind of adjust that a little bit, too. Um, so that brings me up to five, as far as five tier three houses that I have. I need five more if I want to get to the next stage of town. For this part here, we're going to go ahead and... Oh, I spent a lot of money doing that, apparently. Whoops. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, figure out what we need more here. So we basically got no vegetable. Well, we got pretty much neither of either. So I can get like three vegetables going. Well, two vegetables going or one chicken. So I think I'll probably just, uh, well, I can do one chicken, one vegetable actually. So I'll do one vegetable, one chicken, do that. And vegetable. And then I got to rely on... My trading post getting me some money here, so where's our dyer's workshop? Looks like they're at work right now. The firewood is going up. Perfect. Good to hear. Crops are going down. The wheat is getting... Looks like we just sold some of those dyes. The wheat is getting fluctuated around here. Uh, the communal oven. So I can actually... I forgot. I can actually use the windmill and the communal oven to make bread for the time being so that's exactly what i'll be doing here so we got that going are we sewing or what are we doing here it's october this is fallow it looks like we're already planting so i'm, I'm probably going to uh wait a second harvesting plowing plowing and sowing crops I'll probably go ahead and switch this to, um, to flax, and then I suppose I'll get this one on barley. We'll do it that way. Uh, yeah, that works for me. Okay. I'll go ahead and lower this then, and then I'll go ahead and raise this one to high. So we got the windmill going, which is fantastic. I got how many people left on the farmhouse still? I need to get third person on there. Sheep farm's going, communal oven's going, so we're going to start making some bread peachy i got four sheep on the uh livestock thing at the moment i'm gonna need to get some more regional wealth for sure though construction upgrade complete for the fletcher shop perfect thank you i'm gonna need to get some chain mail i think to help with that amenity uh, so we need to get more food in general though which is gonna, gonna be a little bit tricky so i got 21 wild animals going here i can probably get some more meat but I'll, I think I'll possibly wait. I, I got a couple of things to build right now. Uh, I do need to build some more houses too. This is where the marketplace is. Looks like we got some space right here. So probably pop something right here. Oh God, are you kidding me? Oh no. Oh, here we go. What are you doing, man? All right, cool. So that should take care of getting me more population, and that's pretty close to the market as well, so that's fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and speed her up here. Now, I want to take a look at my logistics. So I've got the hitching post here. Um, I could definitely order another ox. I could probably use one. Uh, so I'll do that. And then I can upgrade to a small stable, but I don't have to worry about that just yet. I think as far as everything else goes, we're, we're pretty solid here. Like, I don't need that at the moment. I can't make that at the moment. It's like I got one crafted already, or made one already. Fantastic. A new family moved in. Tailor shop. Okay. Manor's already crafted. Alright, so as far as upgrading my other... Oh, I don't have any more money right now. Okay. Gotcha. As far as this town goes, um, I'm kind of going willy-nilly on it so I can put two more people on that plot right here. Uh, I'm assuming this is done. Perfect. I can go ahead and get that going. I just need five pieces of stone and then I can do some upgrades here. How are we doing on the food and dye? It looks like we're still slacking in regional wealth. I do have this guy ready to sell some stuff. 
But yeah, like I said, it you know it takes quite a bit of time to get all this stuff where you need it to be, um, and and be able to manage multiple settlements at a time. So it's it's definitely going to take some time for me to get used to everything here. I do have to check my wood production on this side here. Yep, we are in the shitter as far as wood production goes. Oh my goodness. Okay, and I think I know what's doing it. It's definitely that Fletcher shop that's messing me up. I'm going to go ahead and pause that building right there. And the joiner one, actually, uh, the one that makes shields. I think they're both just completely sh crapping on my wood production right now. And I don't have enough people here yet to be able to accurately uh, sustain that. But thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm going to stop it there. I think that was a decent introduction. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this game if you like. If you try it, I would highly recommend playing it and at least supporting it throughout its early access it's a small dev team uh, i don't remember how small exactly but i know it's definitely smaller than 10 people and they have a very very good product here can highly recommend checking this out i'm also going to be playing norlin when that comes out in may very excited for that i didn't get a chance to play it during the demo which i was very sad about but yeah check this game out Thank you guys so much for watching and special shout out to World of Warships again for sponsoring this video. Make sure to click my link in the description to download the game and use the promo code WESTCONSON to receive a huge starter pack. That's going to be all for now folks. Thank you guys so much again for watching and have a wonderful night or a day.